Um, so my, my take on it would be that, um, you know, you're going to, the, there are three sort of levels of explanation for why people protect. Um, the old psychological one was certainly uh, the Freudian one of, of an ego protective device, okay? Um, but that got replaced by theories that said, well, we often do things that are not in the interest of the self, but in the interest of the larger group. Um, that's the minimal group stuff, the Tajfil account. We've said that that's, even that's not sufficient because often members of disadvantaged groups don't act in their own self-interest. So, so when you see that, you have to postulate yet something else, and we've been calling that a larger system-justifying tendency where members of the groups that ought to be supporting their own group end up actually favoring the dominant or advantaged group's um, uh, interests. Uh, so, so, it's, it, you know, so your question about, you know, if not religion, then what? Is, is that what you're, I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you're, because it seems to me in our modern world there are a million different uh, ways in which group identity can be created uh, through groups that, you know, enjoy the same interests that you have, uh, also, a, a, including things like sports teams and identity with cities and so on. The one thing I would point the, the danger out for is that old notions of ethnocentrism believed that there were certain kinds of groups the disadvantaged ones like the poor and members of other ethnic groups and so on that got lumped together and you kind of had this xenophobic, you know, my group better than yours or, or sort of attending to, to difference in that sort. What we're seeing in our data is even more frightening because what we see is that an identity with your school, so let's say Yale or Harvard, predicts the degree of anti-Arab bias you might have. The more you like Harvard, the more anti-Arab you're going to be. So we're, we're beginning to think that maybe this web that links everything up, this, this thing that may have begun for some reasonable reasons and that can run wild and in ways act, that it, act out in ways that are not even intended by the person uh, are worth considering. And it's only very recently that we're seeing these webs. And Susan Neiman had a, a point that she's been trying to make. Um, Susan? Yeah, different question. Harvey, um, go yeah, on. <laughs> two questions. Um, one is, although I'm delighted always to hear anybody talk about evidences of moral progress and civilization, I was a little nervous about how far you took it. Um, and I'm sure that, I mean, when I bring up the examples that I like to bring up, it's against a background of a constant voice of pessimism um, that I think is not simply due to the fact that I mostly live in Berlin. I think it's generally part of Western culture to talk about at the moment how things have gone downhill. The move from Genghis Khan to Hitler was of course not just simply small incremental steps of progress. I don't need to tell you this. I'm sure you know that. Um, I'm sure that you know that in, on, on many accounts Hitler was a great step back, uh, and after Hitler there were people like Paul P I mean, if you want a, one example of a villain that people sometimes like to use as comparable to Hitler, I don't think he was, but... So I just wonder, first of all, how you account for that. Do you want to say that this is a, 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 an instance of a great Darwinian mistake? I mean, I would like to argue for the fact that there is moral progress, but it's neither steady nor necessary. It takes place in yeah. the sorts of ways you described. I assume you'd want to agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, I, I certainly didn't. I think I, in answer to Loyal Rue, I, I was saying it certainly isn't a smooth trend like Moore's law appears to be. Um, it, I described it as a sawtooth. Of course, Hitler was a step backwards, although when you look at H.G. Wells, um, uh, I mean, actually, Hitler was almost a step forward compared to, to that uh, Yeah, but there were plenty of other people around at the time who were better off than H.G. Wells. Yeah. But, uh, okay, f then, then we're on the same page about that, but I have a second question. Um, uh, while, once again, the kinds of examples you brought up of altruism being, in fact, in the interest of the species... Um, no, 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 never the species. The individual... The gene. The gene, okay, fine. Um, interest, in the interest of the gene, um, is another example at whatever level, you see for the question that I'm asking, I don't think it matters at what level of the organism we're talking about. Um, I think it's another example of the sort of thing that Paul Churchland was talking about, um, and Pat to some extent as well, that we have all kinds of examples of moral behavior that are in fact um, not only uh, consonant with self-interest, but deeply in self-interest of, of 
whole bunches of levels of organisms, all right? I mean, from the genetic to the, to the uh, city, to the level of a city or a state. The problem is that there are instances that aren't, which is why I brought up the example that Kant talks about of people who are willing to risk their lives or indeed give their lives uh, in order not to be contributing to injustice. The historical figure he was probably thinking about was Thomas More, but it really doesn't matter who you take. It's been my experience that when you ask people, all of them can think of one person whom they truly believe to have risked or given up their lives, um, that is, acted completely against their own self-interest for some cause of justice that they believed was more important. And I wonder how you explain cases like that. Well, it's not easy, but remember that I am talking about byproducts and mistakes. So from a Darwinian point of view, I suppose I would have to deal with Thomas More as a kind of mistake, um, like the reed warbler feeding the cuckoo. Um, it, it, it doesn't sound plausible, I know, um, I mean, another example might be the, is this going to work, the, the tendency for moths to fly into the candle flame, um, which is, one could call it suicidal behavior. Uh, and you could say, what is the Darwinian survival value of suicidal behavior in moths, which sounds nonsense. Then you realize that you've asked the wrong question, that it's a byproduct. What's really going on, at least perhaps what's, what's really going on, is that the moths have a rule of thumb which is maintain a fixed angle to lights in the night, because in nature there never were candles, there were only stars and the moon. And if you maintain a fixed angle to a light which is at optical infinity, then you do indeed fly a straight compass direction, which is a useful thing to do. As soon as a candle comes on the scene, the same rule of thumb now misfires, and you, you, you spiral into the candle. Well, um, that's only an illustration of the need to, to rephrase the question in the proper terms, to be, to be aware of the fact that the, the Darwinian question you're asking may be the wrong question. What you're looking at may be a byproduct of something else. Now, in human culture, the, um, the, the causal influences are so complicated. The upbringing, the, 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 re the religious upbringing of Thomas More was such that... Um, it's, I don't find it a, too much of a stretch to, to feel that, that something in our, in our ancestral past was vulnerable to being um, byproducted in the way that I'm, I'm talking about to produce the sort of totally unselfish, uh, self-sacrificial behavior that, y that you're talking about. But I, I agree with you, it's not that convincing. Okay, there, were, there were a number of requests at lunchtime to just uh, get some clarity from Scott Atran about what he was talking about, and, and spe specifically Mazarin Banaji wanted to have a conversation as well. So what I'm going to suggest is that, Scott, if you just come down here for...